We're glad to have everybody uh, stick with us. Um, we're in the home stretch of our conference, and we hope that we've been able to um, we hope we've been able to help everybody get smarter faster. And speaking of fast, we're going to go to Waze, okay? Because Waze knows how to get us through traffic faster, right? Right. So um, it's my pleasure now to introduce Sarah Hall, who is commercial lead at Waze, otherwise known also as a product evangelist. I love both titles. Um, actually, Sarah's got more than 20 years experience and um, has spent um, the past two years working with the Waze product. Um, previously, she had been working um, in the Google um, YouTube division, um, educating the market about the benefits of at the YouTube advertising platform. I mean, Sarah's got an extensive 20-year career, although she doesn't show it. Um, uh, you know, with a background on the agency side, on um, the client side, um, really Sarah understands, she understands the digital space. And so she's been bringing that expertise to helping us understand how to take advantage of what ways can teach us about how people move from one space to another and what that means for our ability to communicate with them during that process. So I invite Sarah Hall to the stage. Sarah? Thanks so much. Thanks, Chris. Just okay. thanks. So who here is familiar with Waze? Quick show of hands. Awesome. And for those of you who don't know, it's okay. I won't embarrass you. I'll explain. Um, yes, uh, Chris said, I've been doing ads and marketing for the last 20 years in a variety of roles. And I am so excited about what we're doing at Waze. And I think it has such broad implications, not just for on Waze, but marketing plan and communications in general. And so I wanted to share with you some of the things that we've learned. And I think what's really, really cool is this whole conference really speaks to what we know at Waze. Obviously, people are spending a ton of time, over 25% of their media time on smartphones which is why ARF dedicated these two days to mobile. And if you look at what they're doing on their phones, you guys probably all know this as well. 81% is spent with an app. So there's a lot going on there, a lot of data, and nobody quite knows yet how to piece that all together and what to do with it. When you add to that the fact that people are spending more and more time on the go, uh, if this stat doesn't surprise you, hopefully uh, it's at least a little bit better for each of you individually. Because an average US consumer is going to spend 38,000 hours in the car in their lifetime. So for those of you who don't know Waze and why I'm talking about in the car, uh, Waze is the world's largest community navigation and traffic application. What the heck is that? Essentially, Waze is the first map built by drivers. We have users who contribute data just by being in their car and letting Waze tell them the fastest route to get to their destination. I love that I've been at Waze almost three years, and my dad still tells me he doesn't need to use Waze and doesn't understand what it does, because he lives in the same place he's always lived, and he knows how to get from here to there. And I said, Dad, Waze isn't for getting you from here to there when you know how to get there. It's for telling you what's happening between here and there. It's for telling you that that road is closed because there's a farmer's market or a marathon or construction. And Waze uses data from people as they drive to help compute in real time the best route. Chris was telling me the ARF team stayed at a hotel down the road and it told them a different route today than yesterday. For those of you who use Waze, you may recognize that as kind of a core feature of the app. We often help people find routes that they've never heard of between places that they go all the time. And not only do we have passive data from users, we also have active data. Our map is built, and this is kind of an example. It starts with the base layer, and then as we see people drive, sometimes when there are no roads, a new subdivision, or God forbid, they change a turn into a roundabout, Waze sees that in real time. And our community of editors helps edit the map on the fly. So we have data fresher and faster than anyone about the real world. 
And when you couple that passive data that we get from people when they drive with the fact that our users passionately want to help each other, we have users giving us active tidbits of information about the real world through our reporting mechanisms. This shows the way that users can show us uh, hazards, everything from potholes to cars pulled on the side of the road to construction or police activity. And we get 57 million bits of data a month from these active contributors. In fact, places like the California Department of Transportation partner with us and tell us that they get information faster from Waze users than from their traditional methods. You know, things like helicopters and sensors and cameras. All of those things only get updates every now and then when there's actual infrastructure money to put them out there. We get data whenever a driver just happens to go past. So, looking at data, we have a ton of it. We have over 19 million monthly active users in the US. They're taking 200 million drives with Waze. As I said, Waze isn't just for when you don't know where you're going, you're across the country at the ARF. Waze is for when you're going to work every day. And in fact, people drive over 4 billion miles every month with Waze in the US because they spend 42 minutes per drive, which is about 10 hours per month per user. And I, I really don't know very many other apps that have that sort of longevity or connection with their users. But data for data's sake is, is a challenge for all of us. How do you find the signal within all that noise? How do you find the helpful bits of information that are actionable? We think what could be really, really powerful is taking data that you can generate from Waze to better understand your business and putting that back into your marketing plan. So in the same way that for years media planners have used things like hut data about who's watching TV during different times of the year, or subscription data for magazines to follow what trends in terms of content consumption are happening, you can use navigation data to better understand consumers' behavior and plan your marketing more effectively. You can see where store visitors come from, how far they drive to your business, and where they go afterward. My favorite example is a healthy, quick service restaurant chain worked with us. We actually identified that one of the most common behaviors of drivers visiting their restaurants is that they were coming to the restaurant after going to a gym. People were rewarding themselves with a quick prepared meal from this healthy chain after their workout. And they never would have made that assumption without looking at that data. Another example would be to understand the context that users are in. We know the real-time road conditions, things like how bad the traffic is, how bad the weather is, whether or not someone's on a really long road trip or their typical commute. So for example, Red Roof Inn partnered with us and looked at when to reach users with a best promotional message for a last minute booking. And we found that it makes a lot of sense to reach people who are not anywhere near their home, who are driving either late at night or in bad road conditions. And it seems pretty obvious that that would convert better, but they'd never actually had access to that kind of data for their media planning before. They'd had to make assumptions about how and when they could reach people, and they've just you know, bought late night radio in the meantime. We help justify that marketing change. And lastly, everybody knows their business spikes. Things that change from season to season or different times of the day. We've got that actionable behavior in real time that we can share with our partners so that they can either take advantage of those spikes or so they can plan around them and even out their business. We think that this actually is a real cornerstone of how the future is going to look. There's probably not a marketer here or that you all are working with that isn't trying to figure out how to use location and mobile in their mix. We think that the communications planning era is going to all be mobile first and location driven. And data like what Waze can generate should be driving those changes in marketing planning. Just to ground you in what our ad units look like, in case you're not familiar, we actually have a place marker. You can see here Dunkin' Donuts marked on the map. And if you interact with, or if you come to a stop when you're near that location, you'll see the larger ad unit here promoting their dark roast coffee. And we allow advertisers to either promote messages of drive there, which work really well 
for low consideration purchases or save location or save for later. How many times have you been trying to get home from work and realize you need to pick up something and you don't know the best place to find it? We realize that this sort of save location call to action and this sort of ability to have at your fingertips most useful places near your drive is extremely helpful to consumers. And so having this sort of data built into our native ads platform is really a new thing for most marketers who are now customizing their creative specifically for the platform. And when we give advertisers information on their campaign, we don't just show them impressions and clicks. We show them overall what happened during their campaign, and we can index it against competitors or the category in general. So for example, this is a typical uh, campaign report. And this had two flights, one in April and then one in July, with heavy ups at uh, key parts of the week. And you can see the advertiser in blue had a bump over their category. This was comparing campaign for the category in general, so all kinds of competitive activity, versus the marketer whose only difference was being on Waze. So let me show you how this data can affect campaigns off of Waze, because that's where the real excitement is. We think that this should be incorporated in a media flip mix, and there's really no good method for that at this point, which is why we want to partner with all of you. First, as I mentioned, everybody knows about ebbs and flows in their business. But how often do you get actionable data about the business category that you're in in general and where you benchmark against it? Well, Waze data can help you prove those hypotheses and can help you figure out how you might want to respond. So for example, no one here is probably surprised by this. This is navigations in general for the whole category to gyms. And you can see in the US, November and December are not big for gym visits. So now I've probably guilted you all into going tomorrow. Um, and you can see that they top, uh, go very, very high in Q1. So in working with a fitness chain, we talk to them about whether or not they want to use this data about the category in general and measure themselves against it by trying to even that out and having higher competitive conquesting activity during the traffic and engagement spikes, or if they want to aim their efforts at different parts of the year, because they're going to capture people in January anyway. This one's a little more nuanced. This is, a media, or this is the navigations to auto dealers during the course of a typical day. Does anyone have a guess why they peak in the morning? Car, exactly. This is not people really going into dealers and wanting to discuss a new model vehicle at 9 a.m. when they're fresh for negotiations. No, this is people dropping their car off before work. So in discussion with, this, uh, with the auto advertiser, we talked about, does it make sense then to promote the day before specifically how quick the drop-off process is or to encourage people to register ahead of time, send in paperwork, whatever it is that will make that flow easier for your operations? Or knowing that we can give you category data and that everybody sees this bump, might you want to promote that you only need a few hours to make most repairs and that people can come during lunchtime when it's not so busy? It was great food for thought. And of course, most advertisers want to figure out whether or not they can actually move the needle. This example shows the navigations for a chain in the afternoon when they were getting a lot of activity anyway. They wanted to see if they could change from mirroring the industry, which is shown in white here, to shift more toward the morning because they had staff and resources that weren't being fully used at their locations. So we were able to show them, again, this is before the campaign was live, that we actually could shift advertising use advertising activity to shift navigations while the rest of the industry wasn't getting that morning activity. I'll show you an example later in the very hot uh, fast food breakfast category. But this sort of activity that you can show to your clients very, very quickly and index against the category is pretty much unheard of historically. Second, most advertisers know, if they have business locations, that some of them outperform the others. 
That's why there are super targets and city targets. That's why there are Walmart super centers and there are more regular Walmarts. Some have a larger market area than others. But most advertisers don't get this data on a regular basis. So this is another area where we can help out if we know your business goals. One of our advertisers wanted to know, and this is a restaurant chain, whether or not there were differences in the people coming to their locations. How far do they drive? For those of you who are visiting the area, sometimes people come to California and they want to go somewhere like an In-N-Out. Or if I, you know, you go to the South, you want to go to Chick-fil-A. We all know that there are some brands that have people come from farther away. But how can you look at your store footprint? Well, we can tell you which stores have people coming from farther away, what's the typical trade area of that store. This sort of heat map is used by that advertiser to better plan their local market activity. They buy billboards with a larger radius for the stores that are color-coded for that larger market area. Second, looking at footprint versus competitors gives you ripe data for figuring out how you want to market. Do you need to have a very competitive offer in a market because there's a stronger retail com competitor in that market? This shows uh, a home goods store and their major competitor. And all of the stores coded in blue um, have a presence of the major competitor where people are navigating to both versus the ones that are gold where they don't have that competition. So this allowed them to figure out where to drop a circular with a certain message versus where they can promote their loyalty program. And last, if you want to segment your stores, often you want to compare them to each other. So this is a fashion retailer in the New York area, and they wanted to see which stores are outperforming the others at getting store traffic. This is one area where we help them figure out where to promote, again, like a loyalty and credit card program versus uh, discount days and sale offer. The stores had a lower nav rate. We knew we needed to push harder to get people into their stores. And they also wanted to heavy up on local activity in those markets versus the stores where they already had a loyal customer base that was willing to drive. Lastly, we have a lot of advertisers that come to us, and they already know their budget for a quarter, or they already know what they want to achieve, but they're not sure which of their various campaigns will resonate with the consumer. Or they want to better improve it by perhaps making a partnership. So for example, we all know there's a lot of activity in the fast food industry right now around breakfast. So we looked at what's going on in the fast food industry, and right now it looks like with the chain that we are working with, they see popularity peak throughout the day, and they actually have quite a lot of activity in the overnight hours. We wanted to figure out how they could partner with someone else or what they could capitalize on to help move that media earlier in the day. And so we looked at who has the most traffic in the mornings. Well, every single driver using Waze, I shouldn't say that, most drivers using Waze need fuel. Of course, there are some who don't. but. Fuel is actually something people are willing to stop for in the mornings, whereas breakfast is harder. Most people are rushing off to, to the office on weekdays. And so when working with this chain, we showed them the data that they, while they actually have a slight dip in the morning, the fuel category could be ripe for a partnership. And this actually expanded their horizons in terms of who they were talking to about a co-promotional program and then doing a campaign together on ways to reach commuters in the morning hours with a new breakfast product at the fast food chain. So all of these are examples of using data from one specific platform and plugging it back into the marketing mix in a way that hasn't been done before and in a way that's measurable over time. Obviously, like I said, leveraging travel patterns within the category, like the gyms and the auto dealers, using data for store segmentation so that you better understand where your stores have competitive pressure, and then improving customer response and looking at how you can better adjust your marketing plan based on where people are driving and why they're looking at different categories differently throughout the day. Thanks so much. What questions can I answer for you? I gotta ask, is there a name for this? A Wazer. A Wazer? A Wazer. A Wazer. And by the way, you all get free ways now. We Did get you know free ways? Free ways for everybody. Great, Come thank on. you. Cool. What questions can I answer for you? Yes. Yeah. Do you partner with like more 
more like non-physical um, location brands, like it could be like an, you know a financial services or an insurance company. How do you suggest partnering with those companies if they're they don't have a physical location? Yeah, um, because our ads reach people on the go. We actually do a lot to reach people like with really simple messaging about big brand things, whether it's an entertainment release like movie or TV, which don't have a place associated, or a safety message or other relevant message for drivers like insurance. And so while the core of a lot of our data is based on where people move in location, we have extremely high um, rates of ad recall and effectiveness for just branding messages reaching people on the go too. Other questions? Well, Sarah, we, oh, we oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jane. Cool. You know, I'm a, a sometimes user of Waze, and I just have to ask you, um, sometimes the, the sound can get to be, like, overwhelming. It's almost like <laughs> TMI. Is there any kind of a light version that would just tell you of, like, when, when really serious things are coming up and so you Jane. don't have to hear about every bump in the road? Jane, let me adjust your settings for you. No problem. <laughs> How do you, okay, I'll come to you afterwards. No, truly, I, I love hearing from people who uh, use Waze and have questions about it because there's so many different features, so happy to, happy to chat. Yes, Chris and I were joking yesterday. Waze warned us constantly that there was fog. <laughs> they were like, well, we welcome to the Bay Area. Yeah, there is fog. See, there's fog. Thank yeah. you, Waze. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. No, great. Anyone else? Any other questions? And then we can reach you at sarahhall at google.com. Please, please reach out. It would be great to work with you all. Very good. Thanks. Okay, Sarah, thank you so much.